Hey everyone, 10 Outdoors 9. It's dark, it's raining, but we have the garage and some lights. So we're going to run a 357 Magnum ammo test. This is Underwood Ammo's offering of the 158 grain Spear Gold Dot. You're probably aware of the fact that Spear is a bonded bullet. And when you look at Spear's factory offering, their product number is 23960. They advertise 1,235 feet per second out of a 4-inch barrel. Let's look at what Underwood is citing here. 1,475 feet per second. I do not know their test barrel length for that, but let's go up to our test gun. This is a Ruger GP100, 3-inch barrel. Now there are my five shots. That's from 10 feet. And then you have the five shot average, 1,142 feet per second. So we're coming in quite a bit lower, and that equates to approximately 458 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. I felt this was a very pleasant load to shoot compared to some lighter and faster 125 grain 357 Magnums, and also the muzzle flash was quite a bit less. So next up is the block of SimTest Media with four layers of denim. We're just going to run a simple penetration and expansion test. So I had great shot placement, but I saw something in that shot. You may have noticed it as well. There we are in the middle of the block. A little splash of water, which indicates that we had a pass-through. This block is approximately 50 pounds and about 20, 21 inches in length. See if the light will adjust for me just a little bit. Yeah, went all the way through the center of the block, came out right here, went into the bottom of jug number one, com complete pass-through on that. I'm glad I have these as backup. Enter jug number two. You can hear it rolling around in there. Let's just go ahead and do this. It's the garage. We can handle it. And there it is. Let's get a close-up of it. Now, the light's not going to work with me. I'll get a, a better angle on that. But I think a couple of things happened here. The way this velocity is cranked up, there's a reason why the factory manufacturers set their velocities where they do. Uh, you know, that could be that. That could be the issue here. Also, the denim may have plugged it, although just at a glance, I don't see that being the issue. So let's get this little mess cleaned up, and uh, we'll wrap up the video much sooner than I expected. Whatever, just figured I'd go ahead and do it. Here's the second shot. I was trying to go in this area right here, and I positioned the water jugs over to the left just for that purpose, but just go ahead and open that up. Here's the entry there, and you can probably hear water dripping. It is inside of jug number one, and I believe I noted that it did expand. I'm just trying to keep from getting electrocuted. I'm not up for that. Let's get some lighting up here. Now there you go. That one looks better. That one expanded nicely. So I'll get some measurements on that, but it still penetrated completely through the block and into jug number one. A quick glance at the first 10 inches or so of both tracks. This is shot number one. No expansion, working pretty much like a full metal jacket. Very clean channel, about half inch wide. And then on the second shot where we did have expansion, this looks pretty much like other tests where we have expansion but no pass through. About five inches in length for that cavity, an inch wide, half an inch deep. Also, we did have denim in this track, also on the other, and on both halves of these tracks, but we know the story, a complete pass through on both. There's the high mark measuring around the expanded pedals of this bullet, but the average is 0.539 inches. 158.3 grains is the weight of the non-expanded bullet. Also, 158.3 grains on the expanded bullet.
Some observations as we wrap up. I don't necessarily have the answers to this. The block was on the high end of calibration, but within specs. I'm not concerned about that. Was the four layers of denim the issue? Well, we had one that expanded, one that did not. So I'm not so certain about the denim being the problem. What about this extra velocity? What's the value proposition of having that in a load such as this, where we are probably exceeding in a three inch barrel what we're gonna get in the spear load? At some point, I'll test the spear factory load, and I think we'll have a little bit more data to build upon. So my guess is this additional velocity created more momentum than this bullet needed, whether or not it didn't expand, but that certainly, I think, was a contributor to this overpenetration. Thanks for watching.